Officially available to the public starting today is a new software update for your Mac which happens to be macOS Sequoia 15.6 and in this video I'm going to be telling you all the new features and changes that you need to know. The update size on my M4 Mac Mini surprisingly is exactly the same as the version type so it comes in at 15.6 gigs and I was updating from a previous double pointed update. Just to keep you in the loop as well alongside this update Apple also released other public versions of watchOS 11.6, visionOS 2.6, tvOS 18.6, iOS and iPadOS 18.6. I'll be covering those here on the channel as well so do subscribe so that you don't miss out. Something good I do have to mention about this software update even though it's similar to the RC version that came out a few days ago with this one you actually don't have to uninstall Rosetta which was the case for some users with macOS 15.6 RC so this one just shows up and you can easily update over the air. Now that I'm updated to the latest public release of macOS 15.6 these are the new software changes that we have. macOS itself is taking 21.41 gigs which is about average compared to the previous version I was coming from. If we click on this section you can see Apple Intelligence has also remained about the same 11.4 gigs and the build number that I currently have with macOS 15.6 is 24G84. The first change that this update actually introduces is a good one and I needed it because I have an iPhone right here that's disabled so I need to put it into DFU mode to be able to restore and recover the data on it. So this update fixes an issue with Apple Configurator and Finder which made it unable to successfully restore devices that were in DFU mode. So now if you have an iPhone like mine or if you're testing something or you are trying to recover an iPhone once you update to macOS 15.6 from 15.5 it will now be a thing of the past and your iPhone can easily be restored. There's an issue that I realized that macOS 15.6 actually introduces if you're testing it concurrently with the latest macOS 26 Tahoe. So if you have like a keyboard and a trackpad which we're using for continuity and handoff between your Mac mini and maybe perhaps between your MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. Before I updated to macOS 15.6 I had the ability to basically use the same trackpad whether it's the trackpad that's here on my MacBook Pro or the trackpad that's here you know the external one between my Mac mini which is the one capturing and recording this video and which is the one that I updated macOS 15.6 to but after the update the continuity feature of it is not working between a Mac that's on macOS 26 and this Mac mini that's now on macOS 15.6 so if you rely on continuity you might want to think twice before you update or at least try to see if you if for your specific devices this is a feature that's going to work for you if you rely on it. To keep you in the loop and update it as well the SDK or system developer kit comes bundled with Xcode 16.4 which you can see here for the release notes it's available from the Mac App Store and it resolves an issue where users may see a excessive CPU utilization from disk image IO which reduces simulator performance increasing boot time processing launch time and test execution time. So you can always visit this publicly available page for Xcode 16.4. Before I updated, this is the Safari version that I had, 18.4 with the build number 20621.1.15111.10. One zero, and then after the update you can see the newly updated version that's here Safari version 18.6 with the build number that's pretty similar but now we have a, instead of a dot 15 we have dot 11 dot 11 dot 1 dot 3 at the end and what this has to offer from my findings is mainly bug fixes in the background when it comes to video playback and when you are scrolling into different sites that have multiple content such as a combination of videos and image. Apple's work and development on macOS Sequoia is winding down but the good thing is we'll still be able to get like another double pointed update or maybe macOS 15.7 eventually but in terms of new features and changes when it comes to Sequoia you shouldn't expect much since now the main primary focus for Apple and their developers is macOS 
26 Taho. So that's the one that's going to be getting most of the new features, but we'll still be able to get security patches for Sequoia updates. From different tests and with the way things look, it seems like macOS 15.6 is mainly providing SDK compatibility for users to be able to work on the major operating systems without compromising the current ones as well. Something unique happened also with the release of macOS 15.6 because when Apple released the release candidate version of this update, they accidentally also released the beta 4 version of macOS 26 Tahoe. Then after a couple minutes, they realized that that was a mistake. So they eventually put macOS 26 beta 4, but some users had already updated and it gave us the ability to see that liquid glass that had been toned down to frosted glass had sort of been brought back a little bit. It's not as translucent as before with beta one of Mac OS 26, but something that rarely happens, but it did happen when Apple released the release candidate version of this update that we're talking about today. When it comes to Apple Pay, I'm happy to let you know that Apple has launched Apple Pay in five new countries and those are Albania, Andorra, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo and North Macedonia and that is in addition to the existing number of countries and regions that already had Apple Pay enabled. As with any software update, the most important thing to always check for are the security releases and pointed updates such as macOS 15.5 or macOS 15.6 in this case always have a lot of Apple security patches and security release notes. So I'll leave this website link in the description of this video so that you can see what are the Apple CVE entries or the common vulnerabilities and exposures that this update patches that makes your device safer as you are browsing the web. There's going to be a lot and you can always go through the page to find out the ones that maybe you may be more susceptible to depending on your use case. The software update pane mentions things that were already existing such as the introduction of eight new emojis that we already have had the ability to create memory movies in photos and Apple intelligence new sketch option of which most of these were already existing. So what I've mentioned here is just a couple of other minor additions to this. So that's it for me for now. If you like this video, definitely do hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.